we have the contracts with the pharmacies, they have to take their prescriptions down to usually one of the pharmacies that we deal with on occasion. We will deal with places like Walgreens and CVS also. But it's just a lot easier for us to, for, to have them go to the pharmacy, they pick up their medications, the pharmacy sends us a bill. We are very strict with our tracking on the medications that we pay for and we do list every expenditure and we do show everything that we get and everything that we put out. Yeah, we put out a lot. <laughs> Some of us more than others. Yeah, speak to Sister Lucy or Sister Glow about those things. Well, some of the organizations like Golden Rainbow have a very specific area that they are quite proficient in handling. They don't seem to need assistance from us, but we have had a few of their clients referred by them to us for our program. And we don't have to... Um, pander to the other organizations. We have shown what we can do. We have been around for almost five years now and the other organizations have been aware of us pretty much since our inception. We have been able to create a program, operate and administer it for over two years now with no major glitches actually very few serious, very few problems at all, let alone serious ones. And in reality, the, most of the other organizations have come to us to offer their services, to ask us what they can do for us. And it's really been a revelation of sorts to see that the spirit in which most of those organizations were developed originally really still does exist within them. They just haven't found an outlet for it per se until we came along. I think in reality the sisters actually have helped because they are a group that bridges gaps and what some of it has been with our program is bridging a, a financial gap, but there's been something missing in the community and the sisters seem to be the only group that is able to transcend the differences. We don't have any animosities or problems of working with or uh, backbiting or gossiping things going on and it's just something that occurs all too often in other organizations and we have been able to not get pulled down into it, which was intentional. Which is one of the things, which goes back to what I said earlier about having to rethink how you don't react to things. And um, I think that in that effect, we have made a change here and made it easier for people to get along with one another. I mean, I've seen I guess I shouldn't really drop names, so I won't do that again. But I know that there are people who are starting to talk to each other again that hadn't spoken to each other for a year or three years or five years because of something that occurred in one of their organizations. and Just one of these little gossipy things, but because of their association with the sisters and the other individuals' associations with the sisters, they are actually starting to talk to one another again. And I'm seeing a much more positive movement within the gay community here to become united and work together. That was a really interesting time. It took, we had been working together for about, well, fervently for at least the six weeks prior to that, sewing our little habits together and making our coronets and piecing things together and trying, trying, to, trying to do makeup and little fun things like that. And then um, the night of the event, for the first time in my life, I put on what I consider to be a dress and five and a half inch platform boots 
and a full face of white makeup and a coronet and walk out on the stage with two, in front of 2,000 people. And I didn't think I was going to do well with it. Actually, that's when we lost our first sister. She got drunk and uh, stressed out, had a bipolar incident and basically imploded. So that's why we have no wrath as one of the original seven sins in our city. We are the house of love. But I double as wrath occasionally because someone has to. There is an automatic link between sisters all over just because we all know what we do. And I know that there are, there are many occasions when a sister will say she's going to a certain city and someone opens up their house to her. And it's even though it's basically a stranger, they're still welcomed and readily welcomed. And it's, it's just amazing because it, it's an area where you can trust people again. Not that it's without some flaws. There are always going to be those individuals, but it, it's an amazing order. There was the night that Sister Regina was honored as Man of the Year by the GLBT Center, and that was still during our first year of sisterhood. And having all of us there in the audience and all of our white traditionals with the coronets was a very outstanding moment. Overall, getting recognition from the county commissioners, the mayor of Las Vegas, the proclamation or the letter of commendation from Senator Reid, things that justify our existence and maintain our stronghold here. It's there are just so many things. There are, there are individual times that I've seen things like Sister Gloria Ariola having to come to events on the bus for the first year of, her, of our existence because of her personal situation, but her determination to be there. I remember seeing her running down the street with her little flats on, carrying her high heel boots. And it just looked like a cartoon character as she was just running into the sunset because she was going to be late for her little gig at the gate at the Pride event that year. And it's just, there are a lot of little moments. The, the thing that Lucy did at Coronation this, this last year when, the, when we were doing our processional and the blessing and her bell had fallen apart and she didn't know what had happened and she's looking at it and there's no placard and so she just stands up and starts going ding 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 <laughs> and just things that make me happy to be part of a group and I'm not really that much into groups normally I haven't been previously I should say I buy most of my boots online, or most of my shoes online, because they go to a comfy petite size 13, and unfortunately it's the women's size that I need. Of course there's a great, there's a great hooker shop on Hollywood Boulevard that I like to go to also. And Portland is a great city to shop in, but not, not for boots, but for clothes and jewelry. And Los Angeles has fabric, Portland has, actually has some great fabric stores too. AKA. <laughs> and I just shop all over. But it's difficult for me being one of the larger sisters because not everything, I mean, you can't go into Dillard's and buy something off the rack in a jumbo petite. It just ain't there. <laughs> so you have to get creative. You buy something as big as they make it, then slit the sides and put a panel in it or stitch some sequins on it which is real fun because I don't know how to sew, so 